server contains uh, personal communications from my husband and me, and um, I believe I have met all of my responsibilities, and the server um, will remain uh, private, and I think that uh, the State Department will be able, over time, to release all of the records uh, that were provided. As John Harris of Politico said, uh, in other words, uh, go to hell. Uh, joining us on the Molesburg panel is, uh, wow, what an esteemed panel we have today, the Larry Elder Show host, of course, Larry Elder, author, also author of Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours, and the host of the syndicated radio show, The Roger Hedgecock Show, Roger Hedgecock. Uh, gentlemen, um, your take on Hillary, who was really, when you think about it, either thinks we're all a bunch of morons, uh, or I, I don't know, I, I, I don't even think it was, it, it was a good explanation. I don't think it was good lies by her standards. What do you think, Larry? Well, uh, I'm not sure uh, whether or not she should have had the press conference or, or not had the press conference. Uh, I looked at the Associated Press fact-checking her, and there were at least six major things that she said that the Associated Press fact-checked her on and said that she was uh, wrong or deceiving or distorting, uh, including probably most especially that uh, other uh, past secretaries of state have done the same thing that she did, conduct all their business on email. They have not, including her assertion that she did not send any classified material. We have no idea. Her assertion that it was convenient for her to have uh, one device rather than two. You could put uh, two uh, uh, email servers on one device for crying out loud. Uh, nobody's buying it. It made her look, I thought, worse. Yeah, uh, Roger, not to mention that uh, she said her and Bill corresponded. Now we find out that Bill does, doesn't do email, never, only did it as president. Uh, we find out uh, that Cheryl Mills and Uma Abedin uh, reportedly had personal addresses, so they could have been talking about State Department business only on personal emails, uh, addresses that we'll never see as well. Hillary Clinton yesterday stumbled out of the gate. Uh, she was uh, very off-center, uh, off she was very defensive, and she was lying. So now the question is for Democrats who are panicked and horrified today, what do we do now with regard to the coronation that we had planned out for Hillary Clinton to be the first woman president. Uh, this is not a, an auspicious start. This is going to dog her all the way through the campaign because it's obviously going to trickle out one email at a time that she did have classified information on there, that she did, it was a treasure trove of intelligence for foreign intelligence agencies to plunder, that it was a hackable server, that she didn't even put the most primitive kinds of security on there that you'd imagine, and, and on and on. So I think uh, that, that, Steve, this is a a disastrous start to her campaign. Yeah, and uh, could you just picture the Secret Service agent standing guard over the server, as she uh, indicated? <laughs> I just can't, no. can't picture that. Now, the AP, the AP has sued uh, the State Department to get access to these records. By the way, she never answered the question why it took her two years to hand anything over, two years after she left the State Department. And Judicial Watch has a ton of FOIA requests that are out there, some that have been denied that they believe, what we were just told by Tom Fitton, uh, could be reopened because of, uh, of what's going on now. So, um, uh, Larry, let, let me ask you this. Do you believe the hard drive is still in that server? <laughs> I have no idea. All I know is this. If this were Darth Cheney and he had a secret email or a private email that he didn't conduct any uh, business, uh, conduct all his business on a private email, Dick Cheney, the secretive Darth Dick Cheney, they would be marching on Washington right now, the media would be. Uh, and I looked at, at CNN this morning, I looked on their web, web page, not a single story about this. I'm sure they have a story now, but this morning, all quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> that's that's there crazy. Is, uh, uh, there is, Steve, yeah, though, and, and there's a, an underlying issue here, though, is it, this has been percolating for two years. A hundred, at least a hundred government uh, officials knew about this private email. Why is it a story now? It's a story now because the New York Times, uh, you know, 10 days ago, 12 days ago, made it a story, and then it was followed by the Obama press. Why now? There's some great suspicion that Valerie Jarrett, who's always wanted Elizabeth Warren to be the next president to really carry out the, uh, the, the, the Obama agenda, is very unhappy about the Wall Street connections and the connections to Saudi Arabia and all the rest of it uh, that the Clintons have. They don't want to go back to the future, go back to the 90s, and the Obama people are looking for someone else to carry his legacy. Roger, uh, well, that's there's a reporter named... Yeah. 
there's a reporter yeah, watcher I, named Joan Walsh. She's, she's with Salon.com. She's a lefty. And in 2008, she covered the New Hampshire primary, and she said there were prominent reporters, nationally known reporters, who were mouthing Obama's words. They were swooning at his speech. She said, by the same token, the national media hated, hated, hated her words, Hillary Rodham Clinton, I, in part because of all it, the cleaning up they had to do about Bill Clinton, and in part because they perceive her to be way, way too establishment, too conservative for I, a Democrat. We're, we're, coming, we're coming back with part two. Don't go away, folks. But the recent letter from Republican senators was out of step with the best traditions of American leadership. And one to ask, what was the purpose of this letter? There appear to be two logical answers. Either these senators were trying to be helpful to the Iranians or harmful to the commander in chief in the midst of high stakes international diplomacy. All right, folks, uh, it's uh, panel part two. Welcome back. Larry Elder and Roger Hedgecock are with us. And uh, interesting that, uh, you know, you were talking about, uh, I think it was Roger who mentioned Valerie Jarrett and not being, uh, you know, enamored of Hillary Clinton, uh, her foreign relations uh, um, uh, credentials and uh, alliances, et cetera. Do you think, uh, Roger, that this was an attempt to support Obama and back Obama against uh, the Republicans uh, writing that letter to, uh, to the uh, Iranian uh, Ayatollah um, and hoping that she gets support back, uh, in, at least in this instance, on the emails in return? Was there any kind of quid pro quo expected there? Steve, I think you've nailed it. Uh, this, uh, the Clinton camp knows perfectly well that Valerie Jarrett's trying to push them out of this race in any way she can. And I think the reaction that Clinton made there, look, I'm going to go down the line on your uh, appeasement policy with regard to Iran. Uh, I'm going to stand up for you. And I always did as Secretary of State, and don't you forget that. I think it was a very tough political message. Uh, however, the rest of America is looking at this going, uh, thank God these 47 Republicans have stood up for the uh, peace through strength, whereas Obama, of course, is, is standing up for peace through appeasement. Yeah, and, and Larry, you know, I believe, I haven't seen the, the quotes, but enough people have told me that when Nancy Pelosi went to Syria in 07, or I think it was, um, against George Bush's specific wishes, he said, don't go. She went, she met with Assad, she lied about a message from Israel, which, which Israel said that's not true, that Israel was ready to talk to Assad. Um, I don't know what she said to, about the United States position and things. Um, I think Hillary was in favor of that trip. Well, you know, there have been all sorts of things that have happened like this. I just recently read that Ted Kennedy had some sort of um, uh, message sent to uh, the head of the Soviet Union back in 84 in order to hopefully get them to hurt yep. the chances of Ronald Reagan getting reelected. So the, 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 my question is, why haven't the other 53 senators signed the letter? Why didn't all 100 of them sign the letter? There's a third option that Hillary did not give, and that option is that these senators are concerned about national security and believe that Iran, a country that has vowed to destroy Israel and said, one day, God willing, there'll be no America, ought not have a bomb. That's why they sent the letter. It's not complicated. Right. That's right. Now, folks, speaking of, uh, speaking of uh, foreign policy, uh, Governor Rick Perry has just given an exclusive video uh, interview to uh, Newsmax. And you can check it out at Newsmax.com. Rick Perry slamming Barack Obama's foreign policy, saying America is starving for leadership and Americans are starving for leadership. So uh, check out Newsmax.com uh, and you will see the exclusive uh, video uh, with uh, Governor Perry, who, you know, he's, he's going to be running. Uh, and, and you know what, uh, guys, uh, uh, let's start with you uh, uh, very quickly, Roger. Um, Perry is, is, is uh, really trying to, you know, pick up those uh, and enhance those foreign policy credentials. He is, and he's got a, a, a great stand because as governor of Texas, he had a foreign policy with regard to the border with Mexico. He put the National Guard in there. He made it clear that illegal immigration was still illegal uh, coming into Texas. And despite a, a vast uh, number of Hispanics in Texas, many of them supported the idea that if you come to the United States, you ought to come here legally. He has a great record to right. stand on. Yeah, and Larry, a governor with foreign policy cred, that, that it could be significant. 
And this is his second time out, Steve, and this time hopefully he'll be a little smoother. Uh, he's more prepared. I saw him recently at a stop out here in California. He looked good. He looked confident. I think this time he's going to make a much better showing than he did the last time around. All right, folks, again, go to Newsmax.com and check out uh, the exclusive with uh, Governor Rick Perry uh, that he gave to Newsmax. You can watch the video right there. When we come back, you can watch Give Me Five. It's next right here on the Steve Malzberg Show only on Newsmax Television.